Well, thank you again for joining us today for this second day of the AgriBility Virtual National Training Workshop. The workshop uh, has a total of six webinars over three days. This is day number two. We'll have uh, two today and then two again tomorrow. My name is Paul Jones. I'm a manager of the National AgriBility Project, for those who may not know me. And our session this morning is on opportunities for veterans uh, in agriculture that are transitioning, uh, service members that are transitioning, or veterans who are already transitioned out of the military. And we have three presenters today from USDA, Stephanie Pigeon, Matt Underwood, and Manshi Ramdas. They'll be joining us in just a minute. Uh, before that, I'm going to give a few basic webinar instructions for those who have, may not have participated in our webinars before. Hopefully you have connected with our audio, and if you're having any issues with that, you may check your sound through the Communicate menu at the top left of your screen. You can adjust your sound settings or even switch your method of connecting through the audio. If you um, need captioning, that is available through the Multimedia Viewer, and that is on the right-hand column of your screen. You can click on the arrow to expand that, and you should see the captions. You may have to enter some login information, but that is available. Any of the options, the chat, the multimedia, the presenters on the right-hand column can be either expanded or contracted by clicking on the arrows. And you can also expand or contract the size of that entire right column by clicking and dragging on the border between that and the presentation window. If you have questions of our presenters, there are two options. First, you may use the chat option, the chat window on the right column. Just simply type your question into the box. Uh, we ask that you choose to send to all panelists. That should be one of your options instead of to an individual. And then make sure you hit the submit. Your other option is during our question and answer period at the end of the session, if you would like to raise your hand, you can click on the little raise hand icon. It should be near your name. And we will do our best to activate your phone or um, web microphone. Uh, now, one, one thing you probably are not seeing the other attendees of this session. It may look like you're the only one. However, we have uh, made that setting to limit our bandwidth to hopefully avoid any uh, bandwidth issues, so that's not a mistake. Um, also, some of our presenters will not be using webcams today, so if one of the presenters, you don't see them on camera, that's planned, so don't worry about that. One other comment, if you do have multiple people viewing at your uh, particular computer, if you could let us know in the chat window, that would be helpful also for us in terms of recording our attendance. After the presentation, we do have four quick poll questions to get your feedback. And then after the session is uh, completed, we will leave a poll up to, for you to leave any comments or additional questions. We are recording this session, and it will be archived along with the file, PowerPoint file, at our agribility.org website under online training. And then you can just look for the virtual national training workshop and you should be able to see those files. Hopefully next week we'll get those up. It takes a little while to process those. If you have any problems in terms of technical issues, we ask that you try to use the chat window to communicate those. If you're unable to do that for some reason, please email me, jonesp at purdue.edu. That's also the email address from which you received your instructions for logging in. So you can simply reply to that email and let me know. For those who may not be familiar with AgriBility, we are a program sponsored by USDA National Institute on Food and Agriculture, and we work on disability issues related to agriculture workers. Every AgriBility project is a partnership between one land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization. Currently, there are 20 state projects around the country, and there is one national agribility project 
Again, that's, led, that's here at Purdue University, led by the Breaking New Ground Resource Center. And our partners on the National Agribility Project include Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, April, which is the Association of Programs for Rural Independent Living, Colorado State University, and Washington State University. You can find out more about Agribility at the agribility.org website. You can find out whether your state has an Agribility project. Uh, you can look at some of the more than 50 recorded webinars that we have there, and then abundant, there are abundant resources, including a dedicated page for veterans' issues, uh, veterans in agriculture. Okay, at this point, we're going to begin the um, presentation. So I'm going to turn things over to Stephanie Pigeon, who's going to be presenting first. I am uh, making her the presenter, so she should be able to unmute her um, microphone and uh, activate her camera. Stephanie? Sorry about that. I... Okay. Um, so, welcome. Um, Paul did a great job of providing a brief overview, um, but I'd like to go into a little bit more detail. So, like he mentioned, myself. Um, Ram and Matt will be presenting to you today on USDA support to veterans um, and transitioning service members. So I want to start off by just showing you a few pictures of veterans and careers and positions that they have in agriculture. Um, so the top left is a U.S. Navy veteran who um, now owns her own small business. Um, some of you may may think um, USDA is only about agriculture and farming, but um, we actually have a, a, a rural business component as well. Um, top top right, we have some firefighters um, through our Forest Service. We have firefighting opportunities, and and that's um, a, a big job that veterans tend to be drawn to. Um, we have bottom left, Rupert, who's an Air Force veteran who currently works um, as a government civilian at our headquarters office in DC. Um, and then we've got Calvin, who's a Marine Corps veteran, and he um, works on his with his family in their family farm, and he's um, done some value-added products as a result of the, the products that his, his family grows on their farm. And then Angela is getting into farming. She's an Air Force veteran. Um, she's, she's taking it slow, learning what she can. Um, agriculture is new to her. It's something she didn't think about until after her service. Um, and so she's doing some training and education, some on-the-job um, uh, apprenticeship-type um, experience on, on some of these uh, on a local farm in her area. So I just wanted to show you that there are a number of opportunities for veterans in the agriculture space. So why are we reaching out to veterans specifically? There are approximately 22 million veterans in the United States. Um, about 20 of those come from rural America. Many of those like to return home to rural America. For those who don't return home, it might be because they think there aren't opportunities there. Um, but we want to let veterans know that there are opportunities, and USDA can help those who are looking to go to rural America. Um, we also have heard that veterans um, you know, want meaningful work. I mean, everyone does, but veterans specifically, um, you know, want to continue that service, um, and they want to have some quality of life after their, their time in service and moving their family, um, really thinking about, um, you know, what do I want to do with my career? And agriculture, farming, ranching, community leadership, owning a small business are some great opportunities um, for veterans to be able to get that type of work that they're looking for. And, and we need veterans. I mean, bottom line is we need people um, who are willing to step up to feed America and keep our food supply safe. Um, we, we need to preserve and strengthen our rural communities, and we need to restore and conserve our environment. Um, and, and so who better to do that than our veterans? So our Veterans Program Office um, was just established at USDA. Um, and we um, recently launched a website and, and, and a brand, as you can see here, and we're really focusing our support to veterans in the area of the three E's, employment, education, and entrepreneurship. And over the next several slides, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about these three areas um, and what support we're providing veterans um, in each area. So now I'm going to hand it off um, to Ram who is our Veteran Employment Program Officer. Ram? Okay. All right. Um, 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Manchi Ramdas. At USDA, I'm known as Ram. Um, I'm a veteran as well, and I was attracted to USDA and hired through the Veterans Employment Program. As uh, Stephanie said earlier, employment is an area that we focus on because um, USDA is composed of uh, employment opportunity across every occupational specialty. So as the Veterans Employment Program Officer, we can um, take a look at your resume and match your skills and see where you fit in at USDA and uh, see what jobs you can qualify for. Also, I can uh, always review your resume and provide feedback tips to finalize your resume so it's a very competitive federal resume that will qualify you for a particular job. Um, of course, we go through the federal hiring process and the special hiring authorities um, that are available for veterans. Um, your military experience, of course, can be directly tr translatable to jobs at USDA, for example, um, food inspection. Um, or if, if a veteran has um, experience in firefighting, there are uh, many opportunities in the U.S. Forest Service Fire Corps, for example. Of course, uh, if, if you have a skill in finance, uh, if you're an economist, if you're in criminal justice, soil conservation, et cetera, we can pretty much place you uh, within um, USDA uh, in, in pretty much any occupation. In addition to uh, getting jobs, the USDA also have on-the-job training uh, opportunities. There are paid apprenticeship program, and when we talk about apprenticeship program, it's an area that we're focusing on to expand in this area so that we can attract veterans um, that may not have um, the requisite skills or experience in a particular area but we can provide the opportunities and where we can train them so that they can enter at an entry-level position at USDA. Some of these programs, for example, are the Agricultural Commodity Graders. Um, it's a 12-month training program through USDA Agriculture Marketing Service, and it usually starts out at the GS5 or 7. Um, if you remember the photo of that gentleman, uh, Richard Rupert and the photo, he is the manager of that program. Um, when you look at the Forest Service wildland firefighters, for example, they have several training programs um, that veterans can enter into to become firefighters in the Forest Service. In addition to that, there's a dairy grazer program. Um, information on that program is located um, on our resource link that we'll show you later on. The DOD Skills Bridge Program, for example, is another program that we utilize um, at USDA where the, um, the uh, Department of the Army releases um, service members 180 days before they um, get out of service uh, in which they can um, train with the USDA or have a shadowing, a training, or different type of opportunities at USDA where it doesn't cost USDA um, anything but just to provide the opportunity to a veteran. Um, here are some very good resources that are available for vets interested in employment opportunities. Of course, I'm your biggest advocate at USDA. Um, please contact me at any time, and I guarantee you that's one guarantee you'll get from me that I'll assist you and do the most I can to to ensure that you're, you you um, get into a good opportunity or that leads to employment at USDA. And if we can't help you at USDA, we could continue to refer you to other federal agencies um, so that you can get a uh, an employment opportunity within the federal government. 
Um, the Department of Labor Apprenticeship uh, website, um, there's the Agriculture Commodity Grader um, website uh, program that I mentioned, the Wildland Firefighter Apprenticeship Program, the Dairy Grazer Apprenticeship Program, information on the DOD Skill Bridge Program, and the Army Career Skills Program. These are all programs that veterans can utilize to access employment at USDA, and not only at USDA, but across the federal government. Um, pending any questions at this time, I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, Matt, for the next um, set of slides. All right, uh, Paul, can you hear me? We can hear you. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Matt Underwood, and uh, I get the, the honor to work alongside Ram and, and Stephanie on a daily basis. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the, the rest of what we call the three E's, and we'll start with the, uh, the education piece of this. So we know that, uh, that ag experts are in high demand uh, because the agriculture is a very viable industry and it's continuing to grow. So we focus on the educational piece of that, um, you know, letting veterans know that uh, what, what components are, are available, what resources are out there. And uh, we felt that this was very important to include. There was a study that was done by Purdue University uh, that indicates about 60,000 ag-related jobs are available on an annual basis, right? Uh, but they can't be filled due to the, the lack of skills or <clears throat> the technical degrees in which, which uh, folks focus on. <clears throat> so that means there's only about thir roughly 26, 30,000 of those jobs that actually go filled. And what that equates to is opportunity for folks to get into uh, these areas that are that require a high, uh, highly technical or highly skilled degree. And you see some of the bullet points down there below, uh, plant science, food science, um, the uh, biomaterials piece of that, the science and engineering, uh, precision agriculture and, and veterinary medicine. So, you know, and I'll just I'll talk for just briefly about uh, the, the precision agriculture because I, I think that's, uh, that's very intriguing to me. You know, there's there's just different levels and, and variations of this essentially, but again, it takes the skill, it takes the education and the the technical assistance behind this um, uh, that these universities um, you know educate veterans on. But you know, essentially, precision agriculture uses technology uh, out on the farm, out in the field, at various levels. But you know, maybe one example is. Um, you know, they, they incorporate uh, uh, broadband and use sensors to monitor best practices, right? So they can, they, it's essentially integrated applications that analyze real-time data um, to, to prevent or, or help folks, farmers, ranchers, et cetera, uh, make better data-driven decisions, right? So they can increase their bottom lines, et cetera. Uh, but that also gives, uh, for instance, veterinarians, it also gives them the opportunity to collaborate with folks in precision agriculture uh, sectors because um, they can use that precision ag to monitor animal health uh, to prevent, um, you know, prevent uh, certain conditions before it actually happens to, uh, uh, to a herd, right? And, and that's very powerful. That's very important because now we can actually control some of our best practices and implement that in different areas. Um, but we know that a four-year degree, six-year uh, or eight-year degree may not be for everyone based on uh, the position that you're in in your life right now. Or maybe you're from a background that your family already has a, uh, a farm, you know, that's been passed down generation after generation. So maybe it's a, a certification that you, that you uh, seek which is really a condensed version. Uh, you've got the background, you've got the hands-on experience, uh, but, but you need that certification. So um, 
there are many institutions and organizations across the U.S. that offer uh, what is known as agricultural short courses. So it can be anywhere between like a 12 or 16 week uh, course. You still get that hands-on experience, uh, but you also get that certification in whatever discipline that you seek. Um, and then, of course, the the organizations that supply the certificates and the higher education uh, universities, they both generally have student farms, so they offer that, that hands-on experience uh, through do these projects, uh, internships, apprenticeships, but but you're getting both. Uh, one just is a little bit more in depth, and and one is more uh, I'm ready to get into the workforce type scenario. So moving on to the next slide, uh, the the training and apprenticeships piece of this is is really equipping veterans uh, with the right tools to gain the experience uh, and qualifications that they need. So we've just highlighted a, a couple of different areas here, but but ATRA uh, is is one area. It, it's a, a national sustainable uh, agriculture assistance program, um, and they have an arm to farm program, which is for military veterans. Um, but they provide a lot of training, uh, different types of programs, technical assistance, um, and you see there in the bullet, it ranges from anything from a two day workshop to anywhere. To a week long, just depends on just depends on the type of training in which you seek. Uh, another one is the Farmer Veteran Coalition. So this is very very veteran specific. It's a it's a national organization. Uh, they have a, a few different programs, um, uh, but but they really cater to to veteran farmers uh, and provide various assistance to farmers and ranchers uh, across the U.S. And generally, they've got a chapter in every state. Uh, or if they don't have a chapter in your state, they are they are growing uh, month over month. Uh, so I live in Virginia. Uh, the Virginia chapter was actually established uh, a, about six months ago, um, and it's a big deal because you can tap into again various resources. It gives you the opportunity to use um, you know the homegrown by veterans uh, labels logos. Um, but moving on to the next bullet, I can't leave out our cooperative extension partners. Uh, so, so we work hand in hand with uh, 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 more than 100 land grant universities across the, the nation, and our extension agents provide um, a lot of education, hands-on experience, and knowledge uh, within the area that that you may live in. There, they're in just about every county. They, they cover every county at the state uh, in which you live. These are these are the professionals on the ground um, that that can provide a lot of technical assistance, a lot of the education that you may seek, um, and and they are very knowledgeable about the area because they live in the same area in, in which you're going to start your your farming venture in. And just like some of the previous slides, here's some of the links uh, to some of the bullets that we highlighted. Uh, you know, these are going to be available at the end, or we can certainly get this, this deck out to uh, all the folks who are in the audience and participating today, so you can, so you don't have to write down that whole link. Uh, you can just click on it. So moving on to the next. Uh, this is a hard decision, but I think it may be my favorite is the, the entrepreneurship aspect of this. So you heard Stephanie say early on that a lot of folks don't quite know that uh, USDA can also help in a few different areas non that, that aren't necessarily related to agriculture. Uh, and, and this entrepreneurship piece is really a, a dual track or two track. Uh, the first one that, that we'll hit on is, is what we call from farm to fork. And this is an area where we can help um, uh, entrepreneurs who are interested in the ag sector gain access to capital, land, technical assistance uh, to help you manage your risk, right? Uh, and, and we do that through some various loans. Uh, so we've got micro loans. You know, if you're looking at uh, if you're looking at purchasing some equipment uh, for your operation, um, specific operating loans or farm ownership loans. Uh, and obviously, that depends on the phase that you're in and and uh, and, and what what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, for the land piece, there are uh, transition incentives programs. Um, 
and, and really kind of what this does is uh, incentivizes uh, incentivizes aging farmers to transition their land to to uh, to veterans who are are newly beginning farmers or ranchers. Uh, and 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 again, that's that's a that's a one of the programs at USDA uh, within our portfolio. Uh, you see here crop insurance that's uh, that's offered through USDA's risk management agency. Uh, and, and essentially, it is what it is. Uh, it's insurance. It helps to mitigate or or de-risk uh, as much as possible in the event of a, a natural disaster, drought, something along those lines. Uh, and then you've got the uh, technical assistance and the, the conservation uh, assistance piece of that, such as uh, the land quality bullets that you see there. Um, and, and these these programs are really developed to help folks be better stewards of the land, so we can pass the land on generation after generation. Because that's that's really what this thing is about, um, moving forward and continuing moving forward. So you see the picture here. Uh, this is a gentleman, uh, former Army Ranger Josh Eilers. Uh, he's he's participated at uh, in some of the USDA programs, but um, you know veterans are 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 a part of this you know uh, community of new and beginning farmers. And as a veteran, you're you're eligible for programs depending on um, you know depending on what your needs are. So these three bullets. It, it, it kind of really highlights some of those some of those additional uh, areas of interest. Uh, obviously, access to resources, capital, uh, access to land, uh, the business development side of it, the marketing, the insurance. Uh, so it's it, it, it's one of those one stop shop places here at USDA. Uh, we've got uh, 17 agencies across the USDA umbrella. Um, the the next one is 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 really cool. It's a uh, what we call the discovery tool, and you can Google it, but obviously we'll give you this link as well. Uh, so what the discovery tool is, is is maybe you want to get started in the ag sector, uh, but you really don't know where to begin. You don't know what resources are available to you. Uh, so USDA developed this, this, um, th this tool. <clears throat> you go to the website, um, and you'll see a pop-up box, and it literally asks you five or six different questions. Uh, where where are you going to begin your operation? Where are you going to farm? And you pick a state. Uh, it asks you who you are. So, for instance, uh, you can pick. It's multiple choice, but you can pick veteran. Um, it it asks you what your business model is. You know, if it's or, or, it, it is is your model going to be direct to consumer, uh, wholesale, et cetera, et cetera. Um, ask you what your needs are. You know, what are you looking for? Is it is it capital? Uh, do you need land? Uh, do you need technical assistance, or are are you just getting started? Do you just need help getting started? So, once you input that information uh, tailored to to your specific needs, it spits out tailored information um, to to the state in which you're going to uh, to start your operation. <clears throat> so, for instance, in Virginia, it would give me tailored resources specific to my state. Uh, to start my research on and start reaching out to people, start gleaning information. <clears throat> that last bullet there, <clears throat> excuse me, that last bullet there is uh, is great. So SCORE uh, is the service for retired executives, and these are folks who have been successful in the business world, um, running either a company they started or running a you know Fortune 500 company. Uh, they they are they are um, uh, very well rounded uh, within the business sector itself. Uh, but we we recently signed an MOU or a memorandum of understanding with uh, SCORE to collaborate and provide assistance to seasoned or new and beginning farmers and ranchers. Now this may not necessarily be true as is verbatim, but what I like to say is is uh, it's kind of like getting paired with a, a million dollar mentor, right? These are folks who are volunteering their time to mentor you as a, as a new and beginning farmer and rancher. So they will, they will volunteer their time to help you be successful. And, and these are folks that have been there and done that. Uh, so you're going to be paired with somebody uh, generally in your state. Um, there's a link. You can sign up through the link. 
um, and, and you, you'll get contacted by somebody that's relatively close to you that understands, um, you know, maybe your business sector or the market, and, and they'll mentor you. So that's, that's really a breakthrough because I think we all uh, know the importance of mentors, uh, specifically if you're going to run your own business, and farming is a business, right? So the, the next one out of the, the two-track or dual-track is, is just a real business aspect of it. So this is the part that a lot of folks don't uh, know or they're unaware of is USDA invests heavily in, in rural small businesses that aren't agri agricultural related. So whether you want to open a mechanic shop or start a small grocery store in your town, uh, we can potentially help out with that. So there are, there are loans, loans guarantees uh, through our rural business service. Um, we've got some programs that can help with uh, the processing and marketing of, of, of your products if you are a, um, a, a grower. So I'll just kind of give a, a quick example of that. If, if you, um, you know, if you grow strawberries and you want to turn it into jam, there are programs out there that can help you with the processing piece, uh, the business plan, marketing plan, and marketing of that product, uh, which is really great, right? Uh, and then there are also energy efficiency improvements. So, for instance, if you own that small uh, grocery store in a town and you need new coolers or you need um, if, um, energy efficient uh, repairs, windows, insulation, uh, something along those lines, this program may be able to help you out with that, right? Because, again, that type of thing cuts into your bottom line. And as small business owners, we need to, we need to generate every penny that, that you can possibly generate, right? Um, and, and you might see that last uh, uh, bold sentence right there that says, rule is closer than you think. We like to say this because we, we talk to a lot of folks, and sometimes it's, they get a little confused because they say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going back to whatever area that, that I'm going back to, and it's, it's suburbia. You know, I'm, I'm 15, 20 minutes outside of uh, some big city, and I don't think these programs – I don't, think, I don't think I can uh, tap into some of these programs that USDA offers. And we like to challenge people. You know, where is your role? Where does it start? Because a lot of times I think it's closer than you may think, right? We actually have an eligibility map. There's, again, there's a link to it. Uh, we'll get that out to you. Uh, but you can go into the eligibility map that works a lot like Google, Google Maps. You can type in your address or a proximity uh, to the area that you want to go back to. And it'll tell you if your area is eligible for some of these USDA programs. And I'll give you an example. I live in Virginia. I live, my neighborhood is uh, 20 minutes outside of Richmond, Virginia. And based on the eligibility map that USDA has, the same link that we'll send you, uh, the neighborhood literally right across the street from my neighborhood is considered rural. So if I wanted to start a farm, uh, if I wanted to purchase some land, if it were available, right across the street from my neighborhood um, that is considered rural, I would be potentially eligible for some of these programs through USDA. So, again, we challenge you to, to just take a look. Even if you think you're outside of that, what is called a rule, you might be surprised. And here are, again, just some of these links. Uh, don't write these down. We can get these out to you. Um, but you can click on these. It'll, it'll take you straight to the resources that, uh, that we kind of touched on today. Uh, and, and, of course, if you have any questions, we're always here to answer your questions. Uh, please reach out to us. Uh, the next slide will contain some of our, our contact information here. Uh, we shoot us an email. Uh, we actually have a veterans website at USDA uh, that covers a lot of this information. If you want to take a little bit more time or just explore the information a little bit more in depth, um, please feel free to do that. But in the meantime, shoot us an email. We'd love to be able to connect with you. Uh, if you have questions, we can uh, answer those questions or get you over to the right, the right person, uh, you know, depending on what it is or, or what, uh, what one of the three E's uh, that it pertains to. And uh, with that, that concludes the information that I have. And, um, Paul, I think we can probably open it up to – uh, any questions?
Well, thank you uh, very much, Matt, Stephanie, and Ram, for that excellent information that you provided. I will answer the first question. Yes, we will be providing that um, again through uh, posting it on the on the website along with the recording of this webinar. I'll, um, this is Ram. I'll take that uh, question number two. And um, yes, there are the special hiring authorities for veterans with disability. For example, if a veteran is a Schedule A applicant or a veteran is a 30% or more disabled vet, um, they can be non-competitively placed in a position that they must qualify for, and then they can be hired non-competitively. Uh, for example, a Schedule A person can forward their resume to me, for example, and I, in turn, at USDA, will send it to our um, select, selective placement coordinators uh, in our different agencies at USDA, and they will um, share that resume with hiring officials. And the hiring officials will take a look. If they have vacancies, they'll contact that individual, and they can conduct an interview and uh, make an offer. Um, it's the same with uh, veterans who are 30 or percent or more disabled, or even zero to 20 percent or more disabled, um, you can still be uh, hired with a special hiring authority. If you're a zero percent to 20 percent disabled veteran, for example, um, you're considered a Schedule A applicant. If you have 30 percent or more, the 30 percent or more authority will apply in which you can be non-competitively placed in a position that you qualify for up to GS-15, um, and you can be non-competitively uh, selected for that position. Um, if, if you're interested in employment at USDA, please contact me, and um, I can share my email with you um, through uh, Paul Jones, so you can have that. That's what I do. I uh, assist veterans with employment at USDA, and I'll definitely um, assist you. Stephanie, um, I can take this one. Um, are any new opportunities being discussed in the new Farm Bill for veterans? So, um, as we mentioned, um, I think at the beginning of this call, um, as part of the, uh, so USDA very recently, back in November, established the Veterans Program Office. Um, and we now have a full-time civil servant serving as the Military Veterans Agricultural Liaison. And that position was established in the last Farm Bill, the 2014 Farm Bill. Um, USDA was authorized to establish that position. Um, and there's a number of other things as part of the 2014 Farm Bill um, that we were able to do, and we're, we're happy to be moving that forward. As we develop out our program, we are um, – working with our interagency partners as well as our non-federal entity partners to see where opportunities are, and we're moving forward. So as far as the 2018 Farm Bill, um, obviously we're, we're following that, um, and we will be able to, uh, and we have been sharing um, with folks on, uh, you know, congressional uh, folks what we've been doing, um, especially regarding what we've done since the 2014 Farm Bill. Um, and so we're looking forward to seeing what they put in the 2018 Farm Bill, and whatever it is, we will be ready to execute. I would say that um, uh, last week, last Friday, uh, we did, uh, USDA did participate in a panel on Capitol Hill uh, on veterans in the Farm Bill. That panel was, um, I believe the video is online um, on Facebook. Um, if, if you didn't have a chance to watch that, um, USDA was on the panel. Department of Labor was on the panel, um, VA was on the panel, and there were a number of non-federal entity folks on the panel as well. 
Um, so that would be a good video to watch um, if you're interested in any kind of farm bill discussions. All right, here we go. So question four, how can new farmer veterans best access capital to start farming? So what, what I would suggest is, is um, you know, obviously you can contact us via that email. Uh, we, can, we can point you in the right direction. Uh, but you can also, what, one, of the, one of the quick ways to do it is whatever state that you're in, uh, a quick search for a USDA service center uh, via Google, that will pull up the, the local USDA service center. You can actually connect with someone from the Farm Service Agency uh, and go into, go into their office, sit down with them, talk to them. Um, and, and they can they can you know answer questions about uh, uh, how to access capital or what you need best practices so on and so forth. These folks do this every day. Um, or if you don't you know if you don't want to do that you know contact us and uh, we can certainly um, you know walk you through uh, a, a little bit more of a process and and get you connected with, uh, with 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 the right individual. But keep in mind too that there are various levels of this. Uh, yes, USDA does have uh, programs that can help with gaining access to capital, uh, but there are also other programs depending on what your needs are. So generally what we'd like to do is, is you know, kind of develop a needs analysis. What, what are your main needs? So um, the microloans can pay for things such as equipment. And we can, um, i tell you what, what you can do is, is uh, email the that veteran's inbox and we can point you in the right direction and get the information over to you because um, uh, it'll give an overview of some of the things that uh, uh, that it can pay for and what it cannot pay for and keep in mind that you know different different loan programs do different things uh, again it just kind of depends on the needs and, and what you uh, what you want to use it for um, and, and there are so many different programs out there and the requirements and regulations are a little bit different. But again, uh, you know, we can connect with us, we can get that information over to you more specifically and, and more specifically answer your question or help get you connected with uh, some of those local folks in the area. So if, if I think I understand the, the question, so it looks like, um, it looks like the question is there, if a veteran who isn't directly a producer starting a business such as turning a strawberry producers, strawberries in a jam as your business. Okay, so, um, so somewhere in the supply chain, yes, there are, there are, um, there are programs out there that help uh, uh, in various parts of the supply chain. So to answer your question on a broad scale, yes. Uh, there are pr programs at USDA uh, and, and, and beyond, quite frankly, that can help you uh, get into that market segment of the supply chain. Just depends on, you know, at what your entry point is. Uh, and then into the, the non-ag production uh, entrepreneurs who want to start an ag support business. Uh, again, yes, you know, uh, th there's, there's, a, there's various programs. It just depends on, uh, what program is going to be the best fit? So, for instance, whether it's through uh, our what is known as the Business and Industry Loan Guarantee, or whether it's uh, through you know uh, another loan program at, a, at another agency. Uh, but short answer: Yes, there are programs that that can help you enter into uh, some segment of the supply chain. And obviously, we'd have to learn a little bit more uh, about, you know, your business, but absolutely. So uh, question seven, is there any movement on getting agricultural training added to the transition assistance uh, program on military bases? Um, you know, that's one of the things that we're focusing on. Uh, yes, we, we hope to continue to work with um, our federal partners in different agencies in the future to to uh, to ensure that ag is is uh, in front of you know transitioning service members and veterans. So uh, yes, but there's no you know I don't have a, a definite timeline or 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 entry date for this. But uh, that is something that we are focusing on. 
Hi, this is Stephanie. I'll answer question eight. Um, short answer, yes. Um, and um, I'm not sure if you're working through the big department, you know, Department of Labor at the national level or if you're looking at the state level, but either way, um, we always love to hear of opportunities um, so that we're aware of them and can share. Um, and um, so send us a note at our email, um, which is um, veterans at OSEC, O S E C. .usda.gov. Um, would love to hear from you. Yeah, and what is their organization, the one that's starting that apprenticeship program? I was asking, what is the name of your organization? Yeah, we'll have to see if they can enter that into the chat, uh, and I'll monitor that. So we did have a couple of uh, a couple more comments and questions that were entered in the chat after we'd done our slides. There, let me uh, just go ahead and read those out. One comment was, I have an older veteran that is looking into assistance with crop improvement and growing year-round. Um, that's all that was written, but if anybody, mm -hmm. any of our presenters have any comments on that, feel free. Sure, this is, Steph yeah, it's, this is Stephanie. Um, it's assistance with crop insurance and growing year-round. There are assistance he can access through services. So, um, again, um, I think that's Craig. Craig, if you can send us a note. Um, this would be one that I would take for action. Um, I work with the Risk Management Agency, which oversees um, the Federal Crop Insurance Program. Um, so, so send us a note. Um, I think I'd need a little bit more information. It's not really clear um, exactly what you're looking for, but um, I'll be happy to track that down for you. Okay, great. Another comment, veteran service organizations, VSOs, can also provide information about veteran benefits, such as a VA loan, which can be used to buy a farm. Again, just a comment there. Oh, okay, this is a clarification on the earlier one I just read. I have an older veteran that's looking into assistance with crop improvement and growing year-round, is there assistance he can access through services in the certificate courses? Yeah, again, Craig, um, send us a note at the email um, address and, and we'll um, get a little bit more information and um, we'll follow up with you. And, and Craig, just to, just to um, uh, in addition to what Stephanie said to you know, we have uh, an agency that the NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, you know, they've got some, some various programs as well that can, uh, they can that might be able to help you out with that as well. But, but again, send us some more information so we can, you know, ensure that we're giving you the right information um, and, and obviously learn a little bit more about that. But so there, there, are, there are a couple different outlets there. Okay. Uh... Another question, how best to direct a veteran farm worker to gain assist, assistive services when they are wanting to start their own farm? Mentorship, land grant, financing. So um, this is Stephanie. It's a lot of things. It's all of those things. Um, and. and there's a number of um, ways to get someone started, and um, we we have some great tools on our Beginning Farmer and Rancher website, um, which is through the Farm Service Agency, and they have listed step by step um, everything that a new beginning and farmer, a new beginning farmer or rancher would need to do um, to to start their own farm, um, from getting their business plan set up to getting access to capital to linking up with a mentor. Um, to applying for grants and loans, 
um, all of that. Um, and and so if if you Google new farmer and rancher, and I think it's in our slides as well, our begin our new beginning farmer and rancher program, um, you know that's going to walk you through. Again, Matt mentioned. Um, the discovery tool and and uh, you know a lot of these situations are very unique to what the individual is farming um, and to their location um, so the discovery tool is a great tool to be able to go in and say here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking of growing these crops I'm in this county in this state I'm a veteran and you plug in it's like five questions and it pops out all the information that you need that's specific to you. So I think if you are looking to go out and share information with veterans, if a veteran comes to you and says, I'm thinking of start starting my own farm, what do I do? Um, I would start by directing them to the New Beginning Farmer and Rancher program. Um, there's some really great articles um, just kind of that walks through um, the process. Um, and then of course, like Matt said again, going to your local farm service agency office um, and just sitting down and talking with our representatives there. We have offices in every county across the country. So there's one near everyone. Um, so it's just a matter of walking through the door and saying, here's what I'm thinking and let those experts on the ground really walk through um, what opportunities there are and what the steps are um, to, to get the business off the ground and running. The website for the beginning farmer and ranchers. Um, let me find it really quick. Now, is that newfarmers.usda.gov? Yes. Okay. I was just pulling that up in response to the question. So, yes. It's just new yep. farmers altogether, yep. newfarmers.usda.gov. Yep. And it okay. says get started, and you click get started. And it literally, it says step one, start to farm. Step two, make a plan. So it's very easily laid out for anyone, um, not just a veteran, but um, any newer beginning farmer who's interested in getting into agriculture. Um, it very clearly lays out um, that process. So newfarmers.usda.gov. Great. Uh, a couple clarifications that were entered um, from Beth. The program she was talking about in terms of apprenticeships that were mentioned before is called Veterans in Agriculture, and it looks like she's been she worked for FSA for about 27 years and is in Iowa working with veterans um, transitioning into agriculture. So thank you, Beth, for your work there and your comments. Uh, right now, I believe we're at the end of our time. And so if there are no more questions, I am going to uh, say thank you to everybody that's participated today. Our uh, audience and also our panelists. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Stephanie, Matt, and Ram for your uh, expert comments there. And again, we are recording this. We'll get that posted along with all the resources that were mentioned. Uh, for those that are interested in continuing to um, participate in our web conference this afternoon at 3 o'clock, Carla Wilhite, a longtime agribility professional from currently in New Mexico, uh, is going to be talking about improving farm home accessibility, safety, and use of space. So she is a doctor of occupational therapy and has a lot of experience and wisdom. So please, please feel free to join us at three. Um, again, thank you to everybody that's participated today. And at this point, I'm going to sign off and wish you a good rest of the day.